Welcome to the City Current Radio Show. I'm your host, Jeremy Park. We're always honored to bring you inspiring stories of individuals and organizations making a difference, empowering the good in our community. And we're going to kick it off talking about Cultivate. We're joined by their executive director, Joey Lankford. Joey, how are you doing? I'm doing fine, Jeremy. Thanks for having me on today, man. Absolutely. So let's talk about the nonprofit and this mission to feed and fight food deserts and grow food and all sorts of amazingness yeah. to do with Cultivate. But give us a little bit of the backstory and, and your personal story tied to Cultivate. So give us some of your backstory. Yeah, I was born and raised in Middle Tennessee, Dixon, uh, actually. And uh, uh, my wife and I have uh, been here most all of our lives. In 2008, uh, she came to me. We, I was running a healthcare company. She came and said she wanted to adopt. We already had three kids. Uh, and so she wanted to adopt and I started praying into that and we adopted a little girl from Ethiopia and we didn't really realize at the time, but that, uh, that was sort of God's way of, of, uh, putting his, his foot in the door of our hearts and opening it up to a broader worldview, broader picture. Um, we, we went and got Bristol, um, 2010 and about three months later, we, uh, sold or gave away everything that we owned and moved to Cape Town, South Africa. Um, we were able to sort of line that up prior to getting Bristol. Uh, but then once we got her and got her paperwork and her passport, we were able to launch from here in October of 2010 for the next five years, we built, um, um, a training program for the townships in and around Cape town using greenhouses. Now I'm not a farmer, so I was, I love the outdoors. I, I've been raised, uh, outside and horses and cows and just around, a farmland in rural Tennessee, but I was not a farmer uh, like I am today. So I uh, went over there, bought a couple of greenhouses uh, with the partnership of some people back here in the States um, and just began to uh, set, it, set, set uh, some job training rhythms up around growing food. And again, the, the, the man that I bought the greenhouses from was a 63 year old Zimbabwean farmer. And so uh, he's uh, probably uh, the most influential farming uh, mentor that I've had. Uh, but I, I set my life beside his for the next five years um, and was able to really uh, l- learn a few things. One, I, that I really liked being outside and, and, and in farming. I like my hands being in the dirt. It was just a, it was a, such a change of pace from where I'd come from. And so, uh, and then the other side of it was seeing the uh, application of food into the social injustices. You know, it was it, it, in Africa, there's a real, a, a real pure cross section from the rich and the poor and the have and the have nots. And so we, we lived in a subdivision that looked much like the one I'm, I'm coming to you from today in Brentwood, Tennessee, but uh, it was on the side of the mountain in, in Africa. And right across the four lane highway was a township of 45,000 people on one square mile. So it was, uh, just a real, I could see it from my home, uh, people living on, you know, less than $3 a day, uh, nine by nine, uh, shacks or shanties, if you will. And just, uh, you know, subsistent living. So, you know, daily provision, um, and realized through that five years that the impact of food, uh, food disarms a lot of conversations, uh, because we all have to eat. Uh, and so we were able to get a market contract there for tomatoes uh, with like a social equivalent of a Whole Foods. Uh, it was called Food Lovers Market. And we started moving quite a bit of produce through that, uh, that uh, retail outlet there and um, became a real key pillar to their social investment strategy as an organization. And, I, you know, as a business guy, Jeremy, I just started thinking, wait, there's something to this. Like there's a way to, 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 uh, to set up things that have economic value uh, within a community um, to both, both parties or all parties involved, especially with food. Uh, I mean, it also starts a dialogue about how we help and heal other, other elements around the community, including our environment and everything else. So I, I really just, I, I mean, it, I always say I went to Africa, you know, to help and to give and to do all of those taglines that people like me have in there. But, you know, I look back now, even talking to you and reflecting because I don't get to do that much anymore. Uh, But, you know, Africa taught me a lot about patience and farming and community, uh, the value of time and patience and, 
you know, some of my best friends in the world right now are African men that were trained through our program and, and uh, watching them flourish over there has been just, I was, I was uh, in communication with one this morning that has a swine farm in Zimbabwe now. So it's just really cool to, uh, to press in even, you know, I don't, like I said, I don't get to do it much, Jeremy, but when times like this, when, when you have the opportunity to sort of reflect, I just realize the impact that that, five years made on what I'm doing currently. And um, it was, I always say it was a boomerang for me. It was going over there and, and we didn't go over there with a timeline. Um, you know, it was just, we knew, um, and, and I, I'm a firm believer in the handoff, uh, you know, strategy with, with building anything. And so, you know, it, it was, I, I put a timeline sort of on myself to see if I could do it. Um, that's that, uh, that's the American coming out in me, you know, just that drive. To, but, um, th you know, thanks be to God, they, they uh, embraced what we were trying to give them and they've done better with it in my absence than I did when I was there. So uh, it's just been a real cool thing to watch. Well, fast forward to what you're doing now in Middle Tennessee. So describe yeah. Cultivate in terms of what you're doing now. Yeah, so, it, you know, it, as I began to hand that baton off, you know, there was this season of I, something dying, you know, in my life. I mean, it was Cape Town is a beautiful place to raise a family. And I tell everybody, if you ever get a chance to travel and you got you can you can uh, harness your energy for 27 hours on a plane, you know, to get over there. Um, it's it's a it's a real a beautiful place. And it, it was so. So there was a, a, a six month period where Courtney and myself just began to realize, you know, those winds of change were blowing. Again. And when you when you have felt those in your life and you, you, you recognize them a little quicker, I think. And, and um, we had five kids cause we had a child while we lived over there. So we took four and we brought five back. Um, and it was uh, just a, a season where we really just sat in and thought, okay, is it, do I, you know, do I go back to the private sector? Do, you know, I can, I can go back and with the connections in Nashville and whatever, get back into healthcare or get back into something. And, I'm a pioneer by nature. I like to build things and startups. And so I was like, and as we began to pray into that, it really became evident to us that we, we just needed to stay in food. I desired to stay in food. I desired to stay in that conversation. I felt like coming back to the U.S. at that time, very pivotal, pivotal for us in further development of academic and um environmental and just the weaving together of a broader net uh, agri of agricultural engagement. You, we, you know, in Africa, I relied a lot on the, the stuff that was there that we had to use, but in, in back here in Nashville, you know, we have so much uh, resource wise available as far as the help and, and guidance for not only us as a nonprofit, but the people's lives that we touch and the partners that we can connect with. So after we after we figured out we were going to stay in food, the, uh, a governor of our state was Governor Haslam then, and uh, yeah, he and I had met uh, a few times before, and he had a real heart for what we were doing, uh, not only in Africa but just in general. You know, he just uh, would talk to me about uh, how it was going there when I was back on furlough and, and what things I you know th that God was doing in my life, and and as I began to come back, you know, I began to think. Okay, I moved back. I literally, Jeremy, with nine thousand dollars in bank. So, and moved to Brentwood. So you can live about thirty minutes here. <laughs> so it was just like it was scarier to move back here than it was to move over to Africa. To be honest with you, but coming back, I realized staying in food, setting up a nonprofit called Cultivate. You mentioned it earlier, but you know, it was it, it was rough framed to say the least. It was just let's set something up that engages a growing problem of food insecurity in our country, not only in our country, but if I got to, if I'm going to go across the world and love on people over there and I'm going to learn from them, if I, if I didn't bring that back, you know, to address in some way, my, the, the neighbors that I grew up, okay. The guys that I went to high school with at Franklin high over here. And, and just, it was, it would just have been such a loss, I think, in my whole life trajectory with, you know, how, how this has played out. But to rough frame it, it was cultivate. It was starting to talk with the commissioner. Julius Johnson was our agricultural commissioner at the time. And 
And we just really shared a heart for, for not only food engagement, but human engagement, like just the, 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 the reestablishment of community uh, in Nashville and in, in and around the local areas of Middle Tennessee. And so um, we, we were able to structure a deal at Ellington Ag Center, which is the state's agricultural campus just south of Nashville. And um, we began putting assets there to grow food. Um, and that was in 2016. Uh, but just to grow food and then invite men. Uh, first, it was men who had come into a hard situation, a difficult situation in life, uh, to work alongside of us, created a pay structure and created all the necessary administrative stuff to handle that. Uh, and then little did I know at the time, I mean, I, at that time, I didn't know where men would come from. I didn't know how they'd hear about us, you know, um, and we began to get one and two from halfway houses in Nashville that were addicted to usually opiates or meth, you know, uh, from rural Tennessee, they migrated to Nashville because of the resources and the stuff that Nashville has to offer. And we started with uh, two people. So you start where you're at, you know, so it was just uh, two people in a rough frame, 24 week uh, program um, that I'll, I'll be honest, really crawled along for the first couple of years you know building anything you're just you're with trainers and teachers and you're trying to weave together a network of partner players and churches and, and other nonprofits. and so for the first couple of years i think i probably oversold it a little bit to try to get the energy of you know the people around it and but again people started coming and as we started graduating and we began to realize the real impact not only of um the food but of the place, you know, I always tell people it's uh, cultivate has become a very unique place. Uh, it's Tennessee's the only agricultural department in the United States that has a working farm on it. And that's cultivate. And so that's a little known piece of knowledge that uh, Secretary Sonny Perdue came to the farm when he was uh, secretary of, of ag in, in D.C. And he, he gave me that information and that blew me away. I was like, you know, we, we've got a real unique thing with private sector and faith-based and all these rich streams that run through our community playing together in a very disarmed environment. I mean, you know, you don't have to be a Christian to go work on our farm. You know, you, you don't have to be rich. You don't have to be clean. You, you just, we, we show up and we show up with a ton of people and, and we grow, you know, hundreds of thousands of pounds of food. And so um, for me, it's just been really cool to see, uh, the network of Cultivate, I think I'll often say, you know, I think we're probably an awareness organization. Like we, we grow a ton of food and we've graduated 50 plus people through our program, have a, have a, uh, our first woman in the program now starting a woman's uh, uh, outlet for that kind of, uh, uh, of uh, development. And I just think that more than anything, that, that Cultivate has just created a lot of, of awareness uh, in line with food insecurity and the growing problem that we have with that and the ceiling of uh, over the employment of people that coming out of incarceration or coming out of an addiction, you know, you've got all these unfilled jobs, but I had a company and I know how expensive it is to train somebody those first two weeks while they're on the job and then to lose them. And so I think that shared experience from my perspective, gives me the ability to talk to business owners, Tractor Supply, and all these other corporate partners, and and feel the pain uh, that they feel when they you know use resources and something doesn't go right or whatever. But also, I have the compassion and the empathy that I've seen grow within my own life uh, for those that are challenged by things that I never had to deal with personally, and and uh, it makes me no better. It actually like. I've seen my own self in a better light because I work with these individuals. I, I see my own imperfections and the things that make me healthier, you know, as, as I dig into them. And like I said about Africa, I find the same with addicts and people coming out of prison. Like my life is always better when I take the time to invest in, 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 in their lives and let them, I guess the best way to say it, Jeremy, is be the recipient of the blessing that they give to me as well in that time, you know, so. Yeah. How can we help? How can the community help? How, how can we help you? 
So I think, you know, pre-COVID, we had 3,000 people down there volunteering. Uh, so 2019, we had about 3,000 people come from 24 states. And we'd set up a pretty robust volunteer uh, engagement uh, platform. You know, COVID shut all that down and we had to, re, you know, step back and take a look at that. But with the vaccinations and with people becoming, uh, you know, uh, with our community as, as a whole growing through this together, um, we're seeing an uh, influx of people wanting to get back on the farm, get back out in the dirt. Um, it's crazy that, you know, the, those that have gotten their sex, second vaccinations now are, are, are even, I had an 86 year old man come out there today. So it's like, you know, we haven't seen, we haven't seen the elderly in a long time. So that was such a blessing for him to come out and say, you know, I'm vaccinated. I love to farm. I don't know how long I'm going to live. I want to be in the dirt. And so that's, that's one thing that I really want the audience that listens uh, to this to hear is, you know, it's the showing up is big for us, you know, because um, there's a level, especially in the demographic, the people that we serve, uh, there's a level of shame uh, and guilt that they feel with past decisions. And the only way or the best way that I've observed that they break those is to get a friend who is honest and authentic about maybe my addictions weren't the same as yours, but I've struggled this way and this is my life. And so I call it life on life. You know, it's, it's really just getting your hands in the dirt um, and living life on life with someone. The second way is buy our food, support the restaurants in Nashville. You know, we 50% of our food. So the way it works, Jeremy is 50% is sold and to create a living wage for the guys and, and gals. And then the, the other 50% is sold through fresh point uh, and offered to the local restaurants. So, you know, Nashville, the restaurant industry has been hit tremendously hard this year. And I think what brings a real joy and smile to my face is that we get to participate in helping them get back on their feet. You know, like my food is going into those restaurants and going out on people's plates and and and, and, the, and the, the men and women that work alongside of me and, and bust their knuckles and have blisters on their hands. You know, we see it on the news. We'll see our, our, our sometimes we'll see our hats on chef's heads and our shirts on people. And it's just so that's how I just tell the community, man, if you're listening to this, you know, support those that support us. Um, you'll see stickers on a restaurants like Tzatziki's in Nashville, or, you know, they, and they'll say Cult of, our food sourced from cultivator or whatever, but that's just one of many. So, uh, I'm not making a plug for any one restaurant. I'm just saying they need, they need it. And, and we support them by giving them top shelf produce, superior quality stuff, and they pass it on to consumers. The third way is we just got hit by a flood. And I think, uh, it wiped out our entire farm. And so when I say uh, the entire farm, it came through about four and a half foot through the barn, took all the spring crops, took all the equipment, took, you know, and so we are rebuilding. Uh, it's a nonprofit, you know, financially, you can, you, you know, I know you guys are going to share all the outlets for people to engage with us, but we've seen an overwhelming response from the community to help. You know, I, I I guess I would take the flood over again. I know this is crazy, but to see the response financially and physically from the community that comes down there, people whom I've never met who say, this is too good to let a flood wash away. Like we're going to, and I mean, it, it brought tears to my eyes that Sunday down there. There's 50 people that showed up, most of whom I'd never met that said, we saw this on social media and we wanted to come this, we are not going to let this wash your, these these men's and women's jobs away. And, you know, you, I think you, that's the spirit of Nashville. I mean, we've done that through time and time again. And I guess from my perspective, it feels a little awkward receiving that, <laughs> you know, like the good graces and the support of people. I've always been giving that. Right. And so in the last 14, 15 days since the flood, I've had to change my posture a bit and realize this is time for the community to really support and lift me up you know, and carry me along. And, uh, but it's, it's, those are three, you know, really quick ways. So in person supporting our food, you know, retailers, those that are, that are getting our food from us. And then also just financially looking at equipment we have to replace and stuff online and saying, here, I'll pitch it, pitch in and help with that. So, yeah. Well, make sure everyone, the website is cultivate.org and it's C-U-L, the number two, 
cultivate.org. So cultivate.org, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, all cultivate farms. So cultivate.org and then cultivate farms on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. So Joey, thank you for all you and your amazing team and all the volunteers do. Thank you for coming on the show. Well, I appreciate you for inviting me, number one, and for getting the word out. Again, you're helping us with our awareness and uh, just helping us reach a broader audience. And Jeremy, it's a pleasure, and I appreciate you having me on today.